we have a few things going on in this pot. First of all, the pot is broken. Secondly, two years in a row, I've had bud blast. That could be several reasons. This year, I didn't want to touch the pot, even though roots were growing, because I didn't want to risk bud blast, and I got it anyway. Thirdly, I have no air going on in the pot when I filled it up to soak it in some seaweed and some calcium magnesium prior to the reed pot. Fourth, I've got roots still growing, so I'm going to take advantage of that. And the fifth point, my tag is stuck. And it's time to do something about this orchid, despite the fact that it is at the beginning of November. I'm not going to deal with this another 12 months. So, this is my Brassolalia catlia Sunya Green. It's the named version, it's the mailman. And in my east side tour, I was umming and eyeing about whether to intervene now or wait. Oh, another factor, it's rock hard. Hey, <laughs> but it's hard, so the roots are okay. If it were not gargling and soft, that means I have bad roots in here. But the roots are okay. There will be some cleanup to be done. But for the most part, it's hard in here, which is a good sign. But yeah, I was umming and eyeing in my east side tour whether I was going to intervene. And you know, here I am intervening. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me on this repot, which may or may not be the last one for the year because I do have some other candidates I would love to get into but I'm a bit hesitant, of course, because of the time of year. Now, is it just going to come out or am I going to break the pot entirely? Because it's not moving. Some of the other candidates I'm thinking of is mainly for aesthetical purposes, like a Rapiculus Lelia that I could put in a nice square pot. So I'm contemplating on doing that as well. But this one is not budging. Now it is. And I love it because the lecker is pretty clean for now. And the root system is pretty okay. Let's have a look. It's another one of those. It's another one of those. But it's gorgeous, isn't it? And these are the new roots growing here that I would like to encourage. And I shall be attacking the back part here. And it's gonna get a nice shiny new support. Checking it out, it has a branching effect, which is great. Can I just pull out the microfiber? I can do one. And the other one's been literally eaten. So what we're going to do is see if we can gently release some of the lecker, and if not, we will be a little bit more radical. And I think it's the radical option here. Yeah, so let's start with a decision of severing the roots, cutting them through at a, like a two centimeters, two fingers above the base. Let's see if we can get in there. There is nothing wrong with doing it like this when new roots are growing. And if this was an emergency repot, I would actually just pot her up as is and then wait for the opportune time to go in. 
But in this case, I don't need to do that. Just want to be very careful here though. Whenever I turn the orchid away from me where I can see the new roots growing, I have to be super careful and never forget that they are there. The whole point of doing this now is because of the new roots, it would be silly to accidentally destroy them. Is one of my old supports, the wire wrapped with sellotape. And I'm bit by bit replacing that with my nice white wires that are covered in like a coating, PVC coating. Now I'm not saying for one minute that the bud blast was because of the being pot bound. That is probably orientation, location, many other reasons as to why I haven't managed to bring the buds to blooming for two years in a row. So this is not like the solution to get it to bloom. It might just be acclimating, taking longer. There's a lot of factors that could play a, a role in not for it not having bloomed in two years. But this is to keep the orchid healthy so that when the new roots are looking for space, they will find it and they will then grow and make sure that there's a lot of oxygen in the pot. This way, if it's pot bound like this, they will find a way, but it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter of a squeeze in there. So aeration is an issue. I, I did a video about the five factors to look out for when, when considering repotting in this method and if you don't have clear pots so i'll put up a card for you to look at and um, all five factors apply in this case here all of them the bud blast wasn't one of them that was just me saying why i haven't intervened sooner but all the other ones are factored in so i don't even have to do a checklist it was, they all applied can say this is not for the faint hearted, but I've done this so many times over the years. I am, I'm not concerned about what I'm doing to the current root ball because I know that in, for the long-term health of this orchid, this is fantastic. It's going to work without any issues at all. And um, she's not a bifoliate. <laughs> But new roots are always important. Again, if this was an emergency repot and there was no new roots growing this time of year, I would just take it despite seeing all the dead in here, the deteriorated roots, I would take her and pot her up in a new pot. And then I would just wait until such a time that I do have new roots growing, then intervene and do what I'm doing now. So there is method to my madness here. I would like to get in a little bit further. I have no intention of dividing her, but I want to get in a little bit further. So I'll be picking away for a little while and I'll come back. We're winning, we're winning. So I'm going in basically all the way into the center there. And when I see something branching and wobbling and that's been kinked like this, I take it back to where the break is. Even though the root is attached and appears to be growing after this repot, it won't be because of the force of the leka as it goes into the pot. So that's the only thing I'm doing right now. I'm just 
just focusing on the little wobbly bits and taking them off just to, well, make sure that as best as possible, give a good, clean environment for the next couple of years, if that's at all possible with this orchid. Because once it gets going, it is very vigorous. And you can see by the size of the roots how quickly it will occupy the pot again. And not every orchid I have can become a specimen size, <laughs> unfortunately. Otherwise, I would have probably about 15 specimen sized orchids by now, especially the Catlias. They seem to really, really go crazy for this setup. And that would be it. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. One more little thing left to do, and that is just to spray out any of the debris. Ah, I can take the moss off. That's growing back. Nice for the summer when it's hot and humidity is a rarity in my climate, but not so much for this time of year that we are in and heading into. Really dousing it through the center and see if I can flush out any of the little bits of debris that might get caught up in the center there. It doesn't look like it. I don't see much debris coming out, which is also a good thing because that means that where I cut, I made a clean cut on the roots inside. So good stuff. It didn't turn out as to be one of those as I had anticipated. This was relatively straightforward. And I'm going to keep it at that and get myself the new pot. And I will reuse the old microfiber. It just looks a little bit brown, but there's nothing wrong with it. Do my little loop and the next microfiber just goes flat across the bottom. I've taken it a pot size up. So this time I'm not going to manipulate the root ball to fit into the same pot because I'm not taking a rhizome cut or anything. I'm just taking it one size up. And for the coming week, it is now going to live inside, just despite the fact that I have some really mild night temperatures, which is very pleasant to say the least. But it'll live inside because I did put it under some amount of stress and I want to make sure that it, it feels cozy and safe and I don't have to worry about the night temperatures affecting this repot to more of an extent that it's already affected. Let me get my support. Okay, so here's my bottom filled up with fresh leca and the loop of my microfiber just raising up the option of the wicking potential of the leca as well. And now I'm going to place my orchid in and pretend nothing has happened and walk away. <laughs> you guys can go down a bit. Let's see, let's get the support into position to give us the best option of keeping the orchid as far back as possible. It almost looks like I haven't done anything Space-wise, like there's no big margin of improvement. I think we will be doing this again next year. Unless what I can do now is manipulate the root system a little bit more by taking off the length of it in the back here where I have a lot of resistance and giving me more space to work with. I know this is unconventional, 
And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, then I don't encourage you to do it. I would always encourage people to do with their orchids what they are comfortable with. And I'm okay with doing this. I'm not saying that I know that it, this always works, but for the purposes of this repot and the structure of the root system being a branching one, being healthy in its own right, I am quite happy to take out more good roots than necessary. I still have my two thirds of the root ball intact. And that is what I try to look for when I'm being radical like this, to make sure that the orchid that is above pot still has two thirds to sustain what is there and the energy to push out the new roots. So let's hope that theory works because I do not necessarily want to have to do this again in one year. And every root that is stopping me from doing it, getting it back there is going to be cut back. I mean, the beauty with this setup is that you can intervene and it's not an issue. It's like pretty stress free. But the point of the exercise is also to try and get the best of both worlds, leave the orchid alone as long as possible. And that's what I've just done. And I have her with the rhizome right back there. Perfect. Will it stay up? Okay, now I'm going to use Lekka to hold her in position until I can let her go. So where are you falling that way? Okay, let's get the roots inside as best as possible. One already wants to be growing out. Typical, there's always that one. Happy with that? Would you go in? Good grief. Obnoxious much. All right. And I'm pouring in the front first because I want this position to be the steady one. Very careful with the root tips. Don't want to aggravate them too much. Don't want them to stop growing. All right, now, give it a shake. And that was inevitable. This one root tip here that's growing up, got really, really jiggled around. Unfortunate, but hey, let's keep going and get others sorted out. You are very bendy. I don't like you. You're very bendy. You're coming off. Despite three new growing root tips on the end there. Don't like it. Don't like the vibe of that bendy loose one. I'm going to push the rhizome down and give her another shake. And the reason I push the rhizome down is I don't want her to rise up as I'm shaking. And this is a tight squeeze, so I'm not filling around too much before shaking again. I don't have that space back here. So just bit by bit, a couple at a time, which I wouldn't have to do if I had a pot twice the size of what this is now. But still, there are no roots back here to really speak of anymore because I did top them off. But for the stability of the orchid, it's important that there is media back there. So 
So this is like adding liquid to a cake mix, bit by bit. Stir, mix, stir until it's smooth and repeat. How is she looking in the pot? Check from a distance, still straight, still perfect. Keep going. All the time pushing down. It'd be interesting to see if this root tip right here, there's one right down here that was trying to come out of the pot is actually going to survive all the jiggling. This Lekka bead had already grown while it was in the old pot, so it's not like it's not used to it, but let's give it one more go. Before we just fill her up around the top. So for the day today, I'm gonna leave her in her usual place on the east side, but for the night, I'm bringing her in. Let's see what's going on. That's fine, you can stay, you're good. Just maneuver them around a little bit. Nothing there, you're loose, you're stuck. You are loose, which is not a problem, but not on my root tip. And I think that's exactly how I'm gonna leave her. <laughs> As I jiggle one more time. Ah, can't resist it, can you? Label. Let's get the label in. There we go. One last thing up here. The support is not there for the blooms. It's there to train any growth that might need to be pulled up if my light training doesn't work. So I just take it down a little notch so I don't poke my eye out. It was a tad too long. There we go. That's the only purpose of the support. So there's just one more thing that's giving me a little bit of a, hmm, what do I do now process, thought process. And what I am going to do, this root here is used to being submerged. This one right here, you can see by the color of it, it is used to being under leka. So I'm going to just cover it up, including the other root that was growing with the root tip with some microfiber, just to give it a little bit of the same environment it had before. And I'm gonna keep that microfiber moist until such a time that the other roots have established themselves. This is now just a regular water with the seaweed and at a 6.1, 6.2, it's how the concentration came out. It has had enough fertilizer in the last hour while it was soaking. And I can go a little bit higher on the reservoir with the water because the roots are up here. The actual tip end of the roots are here. So it's not like the water is drowning out the roots, so which in my opinion is only going to last a year, but it's going to be a clean year for the orchid with fresh air around the root system. And if I have to up pot next year, and that is what I'm going to do. Please don't mind the child in the background. I'm sure the parents have everything under control. <laughs> this is where Siliano had to go. Reached through his jungle gym and got at my orchid. Naughty corner, naughty corner. Now you can see the orchid is solid in the pot and I do not need to support her with the support whatsoever. So no wires are going to be attached. And then we'll just see and hope that maybe next year, three times a charm, I'll get her to bloom. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you have any questions, if I did not complete a thought process and I didn't circle back to that, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be very happy to qualify it. In the meantime, thank you, appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.